Hi, my name is Mike Brown with Brantley Hardy. Today we're going to be speaking about aerating your yard and spreading materials with Brantley Lawn Attachments. Aerating your lawn is beneficial in so many ways to your, your lawn's growth. Aerating is, just creates openings, pores, um, it allows the rainwater to get down there. Sand, if you want to put sand down, organic matter. It just helps stimulate the growth of your roots, of your grass. Uh, healthiness the whole nine yards. It aerates the soil, it opens up the soil for nutrients, water, any type of amendments you want to put into your soil to help anything get better. You, know, you may have a disease area, you may have a hard soil, things of that nature. Aeration will allow you to uh, work those problems to a better lawn in the future. I mean if you're wanting to spread materials, aeration will help you get the that important nutrients down into the soil. Um, where if you don't do anything to your yard, all the chemicals, fertilizers, whatever you put down, have to work to get into that base. A good time to spread seed after aeration would be right then when you're aerating. Some people actually will spread seed before they aerate uh, to allow the machine to push the seed down into the soil. Um, I've seen it both ways. I've done it both ways with a uh, job I had in the past. So both will work as long as you get that good seed and ground contact, it should come out just perfect for you. With an aeration, uh, plugging or spiking, if you loosen that soil up a little bit better, your items, your materials that you're putting down, either fertilizer, chemicals, grass seed, they will all have a better opportunity to get in there quicker. There's less structure or less uh, barrier, if, that, if you will, because you open it up with aeration. Uh, that'll allow that product to get in there and do its job and have a healthy green lawn like you're, like everybody's wanting. The advantage of the Brindley Aerator Spreader, it basically can do two things at one time. You can aerate as you're going and then also put down the seed right behind it or fertilizer. Uh, basically you're cutting your time in half or what you're needing to do on your property. As long as you are good on doing your lines simultaneously right next to each other, you will most probably have to overlap a little bit to get a good uh, seeding done. Uh, there's no sense in aeration and going, oh, I need to come back, remember, come back in two, three weeks and see. Then all your holes may be plugged up, either with the dirt that has broken down or the soil kind of healed itself. This way you get it done in the first time, first shot, no problem. It's basically aerating your yard as you're towing it and then also dropping seed right behind it. So the aeration is getting done, seed is coming down right behind, it'll get into the holes that you're creating or the slits and then it will have better opportunity to germinate, grow, and be a nice fresh yard. The weight of the seed will definitely help if you feel like you need more weight downforce on it. There are uh, uh, an accessory a weight tray that can easily be purchased at Brantley's website at the part store. Uh, the part number is 1019321. If you get done doing your whole lawn with your aerator seeder, or your spike seeder, whichever, and you have little touch-up areas you need to do, you just use the Brentley handheld spreader. You got the grass seed in it that you have left over from your bag. You just kind of go over near the fences, fence row area. And just kind of spread it out wherever you think you're going to need it more to get better contact with the soil and spread your finished product all the way out. Best conditions for it, you really don't want it totally sopping wet. You don't want it totally dry. You want to be able to get into the ground about two inches get a good aeration done either with the plug or with the spiked aerators. All right, so we're gonna test the soil to make sure it's ready to be aerified today with plug aerators. So we're gonna dig in a little bit, take a chunk out. We don't want it too dry, don't want it too wet. This looks pretty good. If you can roll it around, if it stays with little balls, clumps, you'll be good to go for today. Looks like good soil to aerate with. Yes, aeration is good anytime you can. I mean, now I would not do it in dead of summer. Uh, if you aerate in dead of summer when it's really hot and dry, you run more risk of hurting your lawn than you would helping your lawn. Um, I would definitely do it in the quote unquote cooler months, if you will, or where you know you're gonna get cooler nights so you don't have that heat stress on the ground that you're working. I feel aeration twice a year would be beneficial, definitely once if you can't do it twice. Uh, a lot of people like to do it in the fall, and a lot of people like to do it in the spring. A lot of it depends on, I believe, where you are in the country, what your conditions allow you to do. 
I think the best months to do aeration in the fall would be September, October. When you're kind of getting ready to go into the fall dormant season, you kind of give that one last push to uh, the roots to get growing. Uh, in the spring, yeah, I would do most probably in April. If you have a lawn care surf that does a pre-emergent, you definitely need to talk to them about it because you don't want it to pre-emerge to get down into the, the soil where the roots are and they do more damage than good. Uh, but to me, if you're able to open up the soil, get more benefits into the ground, the better off your lawn will be uh, in the future and even that year, you'll have most of the difference. The difference between plug and spike, a plug is actually, it will pull a plug, you know, maybe the size of your pinky down to your first or second big joint of just like a dirt little plug. And then the spikes just literally just cuts a slit into your soil. So you really won't have that dirt coming up on top. But if you're wanting to do some seeding, if you're aerating or plugging, the plug might be a little bit better just because of the dirt to grassy contact that you're gonna get uh, when the dirt breaks back down and covers up where your grassy is coming out. And depending on your wetness of the soil when you're doing your aeration, I mean, the benefits of doing plug aeration is right here in your in my hand, that's a plug that came out of the soil right here, right now. It'll help you aerate the soil, the dirt, get air and nutrients in there, down into it. Plus, when this breaks down, like I'm doing it in my hand right now, you are seeding with it. This will cover the seed grab back up, and you'll have new seed growing in a heartbeat. Spike aerating is more on the lines of cutting, cutting a slit, basically, into your soil. A lot of, if anybody's out there who plays golf, they do that a lot on greens and fairways to stimulate the root growth to go sideways. Spike aeration just kind of cuts the roots basically and it, it stimulates them to grow. Like if you do a plant, you're planting a shrub, you usually need to try to break the root barrier up. It just stimulates the plant to grow and put out more roots and it's a healthier plant in the long run. The advantage to spiking, I would believe it'd be just for the less, I would say mess, if that was your intent or trying to keep a cleaner looking yard. Um, some people don't like the dirt plugs on top, some people do, some people don't, just depending on how they are with uh, yard work. But spiking or spike aeration will be just fine, uh, you know, do crisscross patterns if you want to get a better aeration going with it. It's just another variation of aeration, either one will be totally beneficial to any person doing a home lawn or a commercial site. I would see uh, in the spring, most probably first of April or so. That way, most areas of the country, you're gonna be out of a quote frost, hopefully predicament. You definitely want the grass to come up and kind of harden off basically. So you'll need to mow it a couple times before you know the grass will actually make it hopefully throughout your season. And that is also depending on what mother nature does. If you get a drought or too much rain, that could also affect what happens. But under normal circumstances, uh, I'd say most probably the first of April to get it up to a well established before you get into the heat of the summer. Spreading seed in the fall is much easier, I believe, to get seed up and not worry too, too much about it. You start killing your yard off maybe in July or so and start seeding in September, August, September sometime. And once the grass gets up after you water it and things of that nature, you'll start getting those cooler nights, which will create the dew to help seed production and grass growth and shorter, shorter days so you don't have that heat bake that could potentially happen with your grass seed also. So that's one way that you can look at the fall. Some people like dealing with uh, the weeds in the spring and such to get their yards cleaned up and seed in the fall. It's really just a personal preference on, uh, I feel what the customer would want to do or the homeowner would want to do um, to get the right look that they are looking for. The good times to spread fertilizer, uh, depending on really depends on if you're gonna go liquid or frannulars on fertilizers. Uh, fertilizers usually are spread usually in March and May for pre-emerges, uh, are usually the first couple laps out. Some people will run a, a herbicide with a, a pre-emerge in the second or third app. And then sometimes people will use spreaders late summer, kind of like an early fall application, and then come back yet again November, if you want to do a winterizer, and you can spread again. Uh, most applications that you'll find in lawn companies are about a six step process. Some do five, some do more. And a lot of those times you're going to be spreading a granular, most probably four to five times, or three to four times out of those apps. So the spreaders, 
you know, the Brantley Toba High Spreaders, if you get on a program, could be used year round, basically. Well, the calibration settings will tell you how much you need to put out or what setting you need to put out for what you're putting down. Most granular fertilizers are roughly three to four pounds per thousand square feet. So I believe on the Brindley one, I think that's going to be about a setting of four to get you the right rate for your for a production that you want to do. But there is a chart in the back of the Brindley manuals that will break out different products for you. Calibrating the Brindley Toll Behind Spreader is very easy just by following the simple steps that are in the back of the manual and looking at the charts and if anything else is needed, you can reach out to customer service. The directional spread pattern the feature on the Brindley Toll Behinds is it will allow you to adjust if you want to go more to your left side, to the right side, or you can fix it right in the center to have a full pattern. And that's basically just designed for if you have like flower beds on one side or concrete, parking lot, you can kind of shut it down to the left side and it'll come out to the center and to the right. The easy calibration should help you be more accurate with your seed distribution. I mean, as long as your setting is correct, you should be good and get a very accurate flow out of your hopper and out of the distribution calibration site to have a nice even pattern for where you're trying to apply these grass seed or fertilizer for that matter. Right after you get done aerating your yard with a spike aerator, plug aerator, things like that, you got little tight spots here like with tree, little tree growth. You need to fertilize. So you use the Brentley P20-500 pH to spread your fertilizer around the tight areas. Get a full coverage of your whole property that you have. Brentley lawn products make it so much easier to get your yard looking to where you want it to be. It's easy attachment. It's just a simple clevis pin that pulls up attach it to your, your lawn tractor, you put the pin back in, and you're ready to roll. Um, it's easy, one, two, three, be done. Uh, just attach and go. And any equipment you're gonna have from Brentley is gonna be a top quality item. Uh, performance is second to none. If you have any questions about anything I've said today, or anything questions at all, please feel free to call customer service at 800-626-5329. Thank you for watching Brindley Hardy's Guide to Aeration and Spreading Materials. See you next time.